All right, let's get this yarn party started, finally. Okay, so supplies that you're going to need, two to three stitch markers, and that will depend on how you want the width of the body of your hat, if you want it a little more form-fitting, like a beanie, or if you want a more blousen effect, and then to create adding with the length of that to be a little bit more of a slouchy hat. So for frame, a reference, a base to start with, choose your yarn. This can be in any weight yarn, any size hat. It's in multiples of six, so you either go up or down according to the size of your head or the head for the person that you're making this for. And, you know, six inches can be, or excuse me, six stitches can be pretty good size depending on the thickness of your yarn and the hook that you're using. So when we get to it, and I'm, I'm going to explain a little bit um, about the hat, the mechanics of it, if you will, and go over that more to help you understand what we're doing before we get into it and start doing it. Um, so if you find that the six stitches are, are too much, like if you know you have a little bit a smaller than average head, but six stitches are too much, somewhere in between, you can go down or up a hook size from your base hook. And your base hook is going to be whatever your yarn recommends. I would use that as a start, but as you know, all yarns are not created equally, so you'll, you'll just have to use your own judgment on that a little bit. Say, for example, if you're using number three weight, calls for a G or 4.5, 4.75 millimeter, but you can tell that it's a little more denser, maybe has a little more loft than if you want your hat, the stitches not so tight together, because the smaller the hook, the tighter they are going to be. But if you want it a little more lofty, well, then you can just go up a hook size, and that might help to also give you a better fit without going up six uh, full entire stitches. I hope that makes sense. So two to three hook size is penning. So say if your hook calls for an eye, that's going to be the body of your hat, the main stitch pattern. We're going to start with one hook size down from that, which is going to be the band. Then we'll work into the body, and when we decrease, we're going to go back to the smaller hook size. Now, for example, if you want a little bit looser fit in the body, a little more blouse in effect where you can add rows onto that to create more of a slouchy look, then you could go pick a third hook size. Then you will start with the smallest for the band, then these get reversed. You go up two hook sizes to the main pattern, main body of your work, but then when we go down to decrease, you would go down one hook size, a size that are in between the two, in between the band, in between the body, and you will pick one in the middle to do your decrease, which just makes more of a gradual transition um, in, into the decrease portion. Otherwise, I think it'll be too dramatic, too tight in comparison. And it'll give a more uniform look, you know, if you went all the way back down to your first hook size. I hope that makes sense. Okay, so you need two to three hooks, three stitch markers, a, a couple locking are going to be helpful. And this is a half circle, open, I mean not half, it's an open circle and it just slips easily in and out is what I have. If you don't have one of those, you can use it locking and you just don't have to lock it on one particular portion that I'm going to show you. And yes, this is one of the little stitch markers that I made, a little pewter butterfly, Swarovski crystal, and a lobster claw clasp. Oops, hope you can see that okay. It turned out pretty cute. Decided I had it here, so might as well use it, right? Okay, so measuring tape is going to come in very, very handy. And of course, some nice little sharp snips also. Okay, so 
you can measure the circumference. You can do it a couple ways. You can take your tape measure and go around the widest part of your head, which is in the center of your head, maybe right at the tip or above your ears, and go around your forehead, measure your circumference. And I usually go an inch or so below that. That will, as far as the circumference of my stitches that I do to allow for some stretch and some yarns are more stretchy than others so maybe when you get to 66 stitches for your initial beginning try it on you don't have to tape measure it you can just and still either way I would go around my head and fit and just make sure it's a good fit not too tight, not too loose, because if it's too tight and you're pulling to make the two ends connect, then it's going to stretch your stitches out too much. And if it's too loose, it's going to wind up being sloppy because most yarns have a little bit of give to them. So just when you get to a certain point, measure, see where you are with that if you need to add or take away. But we are working in multiples of six in the round from the bottom up and I will put these aside I'm, I'm going to be working with different hooks my hooks of choice and I would just like to take a moment also to show you these hats this was the first one I made that I just did a little kind of sneak peek in um, a recent video and my number on both of these is they're both a number four weight were 66 foundation single crochets. And here I did uh, for the border, and you can do, if you like a particular band border that you like, go for it. Do it as long as it's in multiples of six and your sequence is even. So here for example I did three front post double crochet followed by three half doubles. By doing so all the textures on the front and the back is flat. So multiples of six or divisible by six. So you could go two and two, three and three, one and one, really doesn't matter again as long as your sequence comes out so if you start with three front posts you're going to end with the three half doubles. On this hat I did one front post double crochet followed by two half double crochets. This is in Caron Simply Soft or excuse me no it is not <laughs> This hat I made in what I had left from a skein of Hobby Lobby Soft Secret. An equivalent as far as weight, fiber, feel, how it works up would be the closest that I know of personally would be the Caron Simply Soft and uh, that should be pretty easily available for most people. And this is some leftover I had as a Willow Yarn Trillium, which has been discontinued. I wanted to use it up. It's a cotton silk blend. Very, very pretty colors with the highs and lows, but it works up. It does have a bit of that dish cloth texture, and it wasn't the most pleasurable to work with. It split easily. It uh, doesn't have a whole lot of stretch to it, so maybe for another application it would have been better suited, but as you can see it gives really, really pretty stitch definition. What's interesting is on both, now they're both a number four, both were similar in weight, but this yarn is much denser even though they appear similar, and this yarn is, is not spun as tightly and it's loftier. So what happened with the N, even though I did an H on both for the band and an I for the body of the work and then of course went back down to an H for a decrease and these are both I made to be more of a closer fitting beanie style. You can see the difference in the size 
how much wider this is. And I think because it's more denser, it compressed, it flattened out, whereas this kind of the loftiness gives it more more poof and bounce this way. So some things to take in consideration when you do your hat. And I can really see how on a lot of particularly garments, a lot of projects, how important it is to really do a gauge swatch because all yarns are can be different unless it's one you've worked with a lot and you already know and have it down. But in a hat it doesn't matter because we're going to be measuring from the very beginning of it anyway to fit your head. So I just wanted to give you a little overview. So first we will be working our band from the bottom up and I'm going to grab my yarn and, um, and we'll get started. You could do a long chain. You could do a chain of whatever your number is and then work in the back bumps all the way down in your double crochet. But if you do a chain, you will need to add two chains for your turning chain and then start your double crochet in the fourth chain from the hook so that you wind up with the correct number. So you do your multiples of six plus two chains double crochet in the fourth chain from the hook in the back bump and then every a double crochet in every chain thereafter all the way down. You can do that instead. So here I'm going to get get started. All right. Make a slip knot, place it on your hook, just make sure that the side that's that where your slip is, your slip knot goes up and down on the top of your hook facing you. We're going to chain three, does not count as a stitch. Now getting started with this, the first stitch, it's always kind of funny. So because it does not count, you don't make it too tight, otherwise the beginning of your work is going to start out tight. You don't want it too sloppy either because we're going to be sewing that together and want it to look as, as part of the whole. Okay, so chain up three. Yarn over, go through your the top of your first loop, yarn over, go through one, which is going to start creating your chain. Now we're going to finish off like we do a double crochet, which is building your double crochet. So yarn over and go through two, yarn over and go through two. Now the second portion, only at the beginning here, we're going to go through this V, the top of these two loops that we just made. So this is going to be your actual, really your first chain. So you yarn over, go through the tops of both of those loops. We're going to yarn over. Now we're going to make a second chain. And what you can do, so yarn over and pull through one. Once you, this is your chain right here. Once you've made that chain, because it gets a little harder to see until this grows a little bit, until about oh, like 10 to 12 stitches. So just keep a little pinch off there, yarn over, finish your double crochet, go through two, yarn over through two. And now you know this is your next chain where you're going to chain into, not the chain now closest to the hook because that is part of your double crochet. So yarn over, go through the tops of these two, two stitches, top of your chain, go through your chain. Now you're going to yarn over, go through the first loop, you've just created another chain. Yarn over through two and through two, you just finished off another double crochet. And you could put a stitch marker in here, I wouldn't recommend the lobster claw kind. You know, just want something you can slip out easy like one of the open circles or the, the baby diaper pin kind but because you're moving pretty quickly and once you get your rhythm to have to do that every stitch it's just to me um, pretty easy to just 
have a little hold on that until you get the hang of it. But you can see this really clearly forming already. Okay, so we'll do a few more. Yarn over, go through the top two loops, yarn over and pull up a loop. Yarn over, go through the first loop, and make sure when you pull up that these stitches are, are all the same, even height. Okay, so yarn over, go through two loops, finish your double crochet, yarn over, go through two, and here is the top of that chain I'm working into, and this is just what you repeat all the way across. Did you catch that? <laughs> Trying to do a half double there, went through all three loops. So this is what you just keep working. Okay, now I'm making, going through one, there's another chain right there. Now I'm making my double crochet. Last time, top two loops of that chain, yarning over, pulling up a loop, yarning over and going through the first one. Just made another chain here. Yarn over through two and through two. Okay. <clears throat> so <clears throat> I'm going to let you go ahead and finish and do your thing. But I just want to show you if you notice when doing this, we're, we're really essentially working upside down. Normally, when you do a chain, your tail's over here and you're working across with the, the chain on the bottom. And then you come back and you work your double crochet this way. Right? So the chain is on the top and your double crochet, the yarn we're going to work back into, next is on the bottom. So we, when we join the two ends, we're going to flip that, but I'm, I'm letting you know, just so you know the visual on what you're looking for here. So if you have to set your work down, you set your yarn aside, you know which end is up instead of trying. For me, I was like, God, now what did I go into? And um, before I realized, oh yeah, well this is the bottom. So your tail will be on top and your working loop is on the bottom right and the yarn is coming out the top right out of that. Okay, so go ahead and finish your round, get your number, and we'll come back and go from there. Okay, I'm back. Well, I wound up with 66 foundation double crochets for this one, and it can really vary depending on the yarn, how lofty it is, um, how stretchy it is. I remember how I said this goes, and even still it helps me sometimes. So my loops at the bottom right, yarn coming out from the top right. Here's my other end, chains on top, tails going up, okay. So that's where I ended. Now what we're going to do is we need to just flip it over so that your double crochet is now on top. And yes, and we're going to be working our way back from right to left. So straighten out your, your the whole length of what you just made so there are no twists. Bring the two, sorry I'm tangled up here, in my end. Bring the two ends together, meet them in the middle. So you see now your, your tail, here's the chain on, is on the bottom. Tails on the bottom. The inside of your work is where it's supposed to be now on the inside. And the right side or the outside of your work is where that's supposed to be. Your loops coming up from the top. Go ahead, put your hook back in there. And again, always make sure 
You see how it's on the back side that where the yarn slipped? You want your working yarn always on top so it slides. Make sure that all your ends are out so you don't get it hooked in the in the center of your work. So again, we're not counting that first chain three. One, two, three. That is not a stitch. This is a stitch. Here is your first double crochet. You just go up from there. That's your corresponding stitch. Slip stitch through there and through the loop on your hook. What I do here before I go any further and the locking, which I need here, and I usually just go through the last stitches that I just made and then I pick up that first chain three and catch a couple more just to really lock that in to keep the stitches from separating, pulling, pulling them open too much. And that keeps it all together as one piece. You don't have to worry about it twisting when you come back around. Okay, so we slip stitch now, chain two. And double crochet. This is the stitch we slip stitched into, not, not the chain three. So remember that does not count. We are going to front post, double crochet around the first double crochet, which the stitch it belongs to, remember, is this one, came up from it, right, kind of just behind it. And then we're going to back post double crochet around the next two stitches. Front post double crochet, back post double crochet, back post double crochet. Alright, so that's what we're going to do all the way around. <clears throat> and if you already are comfortable with this, just keep on going. And for those that like to see a little more front post, back post, if you're not familiar with it, it's not a full on tutorial how you do it, but you just yarn over like you normally do and instead of going into the top two stitches, you put your hook down through the top and up through the back of the space in between the base stitch and the top of your double crochet. And you see that there are three stitches per for each. So you have your V to the top, the little bottom third stitch that connects them all, and same with this. You have the third stitch connects and then your other two stitches. So you're working in between, down through the top, up through the back, yarn over and you pull your loop through that space, then just finish off your double crochet as usual and in the back instead of going down through the top up through the back you're going up through the back and down through the top and it, it helps if I pinch just kind of hold the two sides together to pull through to keep from catching on any yarn that's underneath there that's all there is to it up through the bottom down through the top or along the post the post of the double crochet or the leg as it is also I've heard it called. That's it. Okay, so go around, meet you around, and all we're going to do is when we get back around, slip stitch to the top of your first front post double crochet, chain two, and repeat. So I'll do another row with you and then you'll get the hang of it and 
can finish that up on your own and we're just going to keep going around and around until you work up to the height that you would like for the base the band the part that goes around your ears and around you know the, the top part of your forehead so you can decide how wide or narrow you want that it's entirely up to you I'm back around and I stopped just short of the last three stitches so again go back to the first three chains that does not count as a stitch on the left side of your join but this la this is a last stitch as you come around on the last on the right side of your join and there's the top of the stitch so this does count oh did you see that yeah I snagged it I snagged it on my um, stitch marker but I can just kind of pick through a little bit later maybe with a needle and and work that back in and fix it but anyway um, I'm going to finish the last three so front post followed by two back posts and on this last one here I'm going to join the stitch and the chain three together as one since it did not work it was too much of a gap pulling the stitch into the the first stitch in the round it evens up quite nicely when doing it in the last stitch and you get a, a very lovely seamless join so again this chain one now does not count go up to the top front post double crochet into the stitch slip stitch through and through the loop on your hook now we're going to chain one again repeat what we did in the first round yarn over and do a front post double crochet in the front post double crochet from the previous round followed by two back post double crochet when you go through this one becomes a little more squatty this back post double crochet when you you know like I mentioned when you go through that it helps if yeah like I said you get a good grip there and turn your hook downwards there we go that's better Oops helps if I put it in the right hole so around back post bring the yarn down depending on how slippery the yarn is that you're working with just take a little time going back through here it's just for the band okay so just finish all the way around front post around the front post from your previous row back post into the back two back posts and go around and just continue working to the height that you would like stop there and then I'll show you how we're going to going to do the join for the body of the work all right I'm back I did all of the rows that I wanted to I this portion is my foundation double crochet and I went up five rows one two three four five because I just you can do yours real skinny if you want to it doesn't matter I just wanted a little bit more coverage for my ears so now I'm going to first I will connect and then I'm going to switch to my larger hook And as always, don't count that chain one. Slip stitch into the top of your front post double crochet and through into your loop. And now what we're going to do, and if you want to, really, you can just begin the pattern right into your stitches. But I would like just a little more definition of the band transitioning into the body of the work. Okay, switch hooks. I must put that one aside or I'm, I'm going to wind up using the wrong hook. 
but because this has a base you know it has your your nice chain that pops out and then a stitch here which is part of your foundation double crochet so I'm going to try to kind of replicate mimic that as a little edging here and it also gives a really nice base for the pattern in the body of the work so these stitches don't get pulled out in any funny sort of way. All right, so slip stitch, just going to do one row, chain one, do a single crochet back into the same, very same stitch, top of the double crochet that we just slip stitched into, a single crochet into that stitch, single crochet all the way around, and I like going up to my the hook size I'm using for the body of the work here. Um, then it's not too tight and it's a smoother transition to the body. Now except if you are going up two hook sizes for the body because you want a little more of a blousen effect then for just this one row of single crochet you might want to go and that do that in between size again just to help bridge the gap because just think you're trying to fit a hook two sizes up into a hook two sizes down into that hole and it might might not look as nice or as clean you can try it if you want to it's just my recommendation not trying to to cram something in a smaller a stitch that's two sizes down just gives a, a nice bit of a bit of a transition and using a smaller hook I tried that the same hook size as this and it, it just it didn't look good it was just too tight okay so go ahead do your singles all the way around and I will meet you back at the beginning and we'll get into pattern. Okay, I'm back, stopped short of my last two stitches. So I have the two back post double crochets left. Now slip stitch into the top of the first single crochet, which goes straight up if you follow the line of your front post, not that chain one that we did which does not count as a stitch slip stitch alright now here we're going to chain one and we're going to start with our first cluster and we're going to be working the, this is a three double crochet cluster so you have one two three double crochets all made up into one cluster separated by a chain one with another cluster all in to the same stitch that's what we're going to be doing so to do that chain over go back into the same stitch we came out of slip stitched into yarn over pull up a loop yarn over pull through the first two you can see there's a first leg of our cluster made with two chains or uh, the double crochet made excuse me with two chains on your hook you repeat that two more times yarn over back into the same stitch yarn over pull up a loop yarn over chain through two now I have three loops on your hook your portions of your do two double crochets made and the last time yarn over into the stitch yarn over pull up yarn over pull through two you can see the three double crochets that's your chain one does not count four loops on the hook yarn over pull through all four loops chain one which locks that stitch in and also gives some nice separation the chain one counts as a stitch and this one elongated V counts as a stitch because you brought all three stitches 
your double crochets together into one and again this little mini V here is your chain one space does not count. Now we're going to repeat the cluster in the same stitch yarn over back into the same stitch pull up a loop yarn over pull through two two loops first portion first double crochet yarn over go in yarn over pull up yarn over pull through two three loops on your hook two double crochets yarn over back into the same stitch yarn over pull up a loop yarn over pull through two four loops on your hook there are your three double crochets. Now we're going to yarn over, pull through all four stitches, chain one, locks it in and counts as a stitch. So we have one, two, three, four stitches made. I'm explaining this to you because we'll be needing to pay attention to these a little bit later on when we do the decrease. So if you look here, you can see that because if look here in the stitch next to where we just worked, there's a lot of width because of the cluster. And what it tends to kind of pull the next stitch over a little bit inward, and it can give the appearance that it belongs to the cluster, the stitch where we clustered into, but it does not it's his own stitch so be sure you count that as a stitch when you're working and what we're going to do after the chain one is skip the next two so we're skipping that stitch that butts right up next to the cluster stitches skip one two and in the next stitch simply double crochet and then chain one we're going to skip two more stitches and then begin another begin another cluster. So there all will always be in the body of the work a chain one in between each stitch and two skip stitches in between each stitch. So what you will see is that you will be clustering into the top of your front post and then you will be double crocheting into the top of your front post. That's where those stitches will be long all the way across. So I'll do a few more with you and get the hang of it. For those of you who already get the gist, go ahead and finish your round and I'll show you how we're going to connect to make that jog into where we need to be so to do our alternating pattern. Alright, so skip two stitches, place another cluster, insert hook, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, two stitches, first double crochet, yarn over, insert back into the same stitch through both loops, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two loops, three loops on your hook, two double crochets last time, yarn over, insert, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two more, four loops on your hook, three double crochets, yarn over, pull through all four loops, chain one, and repeat that. And it's only going to be at the beginning of the row that we chain one into that first stitch. It gives you the little bit of the height that we need and it, and it really helps to center this first cluster. As you can see on the first cluster we have again that elongated stitch and it does tend to roll over a little bit but we're, when we um, slip stitch together in the particular stitch that we're going to I'll explain to you you know what we're doing and why don't worry it's going to straighten that up and make it look really nice alright so let's finish our second cluster yarn over insert yarn over pull up yarn over pull through two do this two more times
yarn over, pull through all four, chain one, skip two, again, make sure it's the one that's right next to where we clustered in two. Don't, don't get lost on that, especially if you're using a denser, thicker yarn or something that's small and harder to see. And if your stitches are a little tighter, depending on your tension. So we will skip two stitches, double crochet in the next, chain one, skip two, and again begin your cluster. And that's all there is to it. So go ahead, finish your round, I will meet you back at the beginning and we'll move on to the next. And it's always, you know, this is your setup row, always takes a little longer because you're having to count your spaces in between but once we get going to body of work it, it works up very quickly and before you know it you are going to have a lovely hat completed all right so I'll see you around I didn't realize how much the lovely Sun is was coming through on the table here so like focused on my work but I just I wanted to add and mention one more thing that after you do your round of um, single crochets because they are smaller stitches they might appear to be ever so slightly to the right of that double crochet so just make sure that your your count is correct you're putting it in the right stitch not way over to the right but just just a little like half jog there and also before you connect if you um, on each round that you do I always check my work give it a little glance make sure all my stitches are are correct that I didn't accidentally put two clusters next to each other or a, or a one cluster and 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 I accidentally omitted the entire stitch, which happens. We all make mistakes, so it's just so much easier to correct it while you're in process and then until you get on your next row and, and make it all the way around. Okay, so I will see you back. Oh, this yarn sure works up nice. Feels good to me. <laughs> all right, so I chained one and now I'm going to work my last stitch of the round skip two and into the top of the single crochet which is straight up from the front post below work my double crochet chain one for that last stitch so whatever stitch you began with you will end with the opposite if you could begin with the, uh, the double crochet clusters, then you're going to end with just the one double crochet. So now we need to slip stitch over to that chain one space. Now here is that elongated, and you can see if, I don't know if yours probably does, it's tending to roll and pull over a little bit. So now we're not going to slip stitch into that stitch, and I will show you why. What happens is when you do that, and different yarns are going to be a little more pronounced a little differently, but particularly in those other two yarns, the acrylic and then that cotton silk, you could really see the separation. What it tends to do is just pull these stitches apart like that. <clears throat> so instead, to keep the shape of the cluster together and to straighten that side up where it's supposed to be we're going to slip stitch into that chain one, chain one that you made at the top it's the only time we're going to have to do this is that the at the beginning and I've been playing around and taking my yarn out you know, so um, cinched up a little tighter than yours might be, but slip stitch through that chain one and the loop on your hook. And now 
we're going to slip stitch again into the chain one space and normally when we begin the stitch that I'm going to show you you don't necessarily chain one but I'm going to do that here because it locks us in helps keep this next stitch centered where we want it to be so there are a couple ways you can do it instead of really locking that down we're going to be placing a double crochet or alternate so you can do your chain three which counts as a double crochet and, and in that case just make this a normal size chain not cinching it down because this cinching it down serves a different purpose as I um, mentioned so you can do your chain three if you do remember you will need to chain one more so actually four is that the three counts as your double crochet and the next chain is the chain that you do after each double crochet which is its own stitch so when you come back around you will have to put your hook through the top the third chain up not the fourth one right, another way is you can single crochet and chain one which can count as a double crochet a chainless double crochet but again you will have to chain one more because that's a stitch when you come back around you will be slip stitching into this first chain in between the single and the last chain on your hook so what I'm going to do is show you just a little quickie tutorial on and if you want to see the the full thing you know I came across I, I just knew that there had to be another way that resembled even more a real double crochet so I spent some time here and there and I typed in different words and looked and didn't find anything and then a couple weeks later I went back tried other keywords and combinations and searches and lo and behold yay for yarn popped up y-a-y-f-o-r yay for yarn I don't know her um, and I'm sorry I don't know her name but I'm going to put the link below and she does a real nice demo all working in the round of a, a single half double and double crochet and it is called sorry for the wrestling the invisible slip stitch and chainless starting stitch and I haven't had a lot of practice with the single and half double but I have with the double crochet and again as, as we often do adapt things that work for us but not only do I work in the round I use it a lot of times when I'm working back and forth instead of the chain three I I like the look that it gives um, and a little more substance to work with because you really have the full stitch so instead of yarning over what we do is um, and, and also I say I, I don't know who the genius is that came up with this but I just I think it's absolutely terrific and I saw another demo of it but unfortunately I didn't remember the name of the the person or I would link both so instead of yarning over what we're going to do as you raise your hook to approximately the height of a double crochet um, now this this gal puts takes her index finger and puts a little pressure to hold the yarn on the hook for me that was a little awkward not as comfortable on my wrist so I'm taking my thumb putting holding it there and then you turn your hook around go around backwards and, it, and your finger might slip off it happens with me still from time to time but I want to show you what happens if you do Whoop, it just untwists just as easy as that so when you twist your yarn back around always make sure that where it's sliding in from is on the top of your hook facing you, you and your yarn is in back okay so again pull up your hook hold it down bring your hook around backwards now you're going to go into your stitch so remember not the top but in that actual chain one space and this is just like a double crochet yarn over and pull up a loop yarn over again pull through the loop you just created and your second loop would 
behind your second loop, which is that elongated stitch. Now here you have a hold of both so you can let go. Sometimes if you need to, you can just give a little tug up and pull it down and that is going to even up these two loops on your hook. Yarn over and just finish off, just like you do a double crochet, pull through the last two stitches. I'll show you one more time and then we'll um, go ahead and carry on. Pull up your loop, around backwards, into the stitch, yarn over, pull through two, which you go through the first, around the back, let go, pull through two. It's much easier doing that in a fluid motion and so I created a little bit too much of a gap there than I really wanted to. But I, I wanted to show that to you. And then again, you know, catch Yay for Yarns demo. Because you can cinch that down as long as, and cinch your tension as long as you have a good, good grip here. Okay. And of course, your chain one. Now, here would be a good spot to put a little stitch marker into the top of your two stitches because sometimes this little center stitch here pokes up so you want to make sure you're getting your two outer, the one closest closest to you and the outside loop farthest away. Okay. There's the chain one intact. So now, yes, that is correct. The next double crochet we're going to cluster into. But I just love using that and, and I once you get the hang of it, yeah, it's going to take a little practice and if you don't want to practice with this project that if you're working on it with me, just set it down, get some yarn that you can practice and and uh, take out and redo a few times. You don't have to worry about it fraying and it'll still be fine and usable afterwards because once you have some practice with it, it is just so nice. I love it. And to me, once I do it, most times than not, it's uh, just like working any other stitch, a regular stitch. Okay, so you see what I'm doing here? Doing the double cluster. Now I'm doing the opposite. The double cluster into double crochet and the double crochet into the cluster. And just keep repeating that all the way around and this is what we're going to be doing, alternating these two rows up to the height that you want. I'll go ahead and, and show you how I connect and then carry on this next row and then I'll let you finish that up. And again, for those of you who already get the gist, um, as far as height goes, some different options for you now. Regardless of the height you want to go, you measure from the very bottom of your hat where you began, not where you began your stitch pattern, but the bottom of the hat. Uh, and of course everyone's different, different shape heads, roundness and length. So this is just a basic guide, but you do have some flexibility on this. And I would say for an average size head, go up about 5 inches, which is a little over 12 and a half centimeters. If you want, if you want, um, a more form, closer fitting beanie style hat. If you want a little bit longer, a little looser, just give you a little more breathing room and a gentle slouch, you can go up say five and a half inches. This is just a guide, five and a half inches or 14 centimeters. And if you want a medium slouch, you can go up six, six and a half inches and a real long slouch, a little beyond that. I would start at half inch or so increments um, as far as the beginning portion of it up to five inches and this is going to depend on your stitch tension the type of yarn that you used the smaller the yarn the more rows it's going to take the more of the pattern that you see 
and you can just decide however many rows you you go up you would just count them you know one two three four they're going to to stagger like that if you follow say visually for the cluster and it's easy to see your rows here some patterns are not so easily defined um, so anyway I would uh, just work it that way and then maybe increase by half in inch increments tried on your head and just kind of get a feel for how much excess you're going to have because we are going to have keep in mind now six rows of decrease so the higher you go the longer it is going to be and then once you get up to that height I'll meet you there and then I'll show you how to do the decrease portion of it okay see you soon